Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life and welcome to another installment of Viewers Knives. This here is episode number 39 and if you're brand new to the channel, what this segment is, is essentially the viewers share their knives with me. They email me, picture their knives, that's you guys. I share them with the world in these videos. It's so cool to see what you guys have been making, the different approaches you take to knife making, the, you know, the stories behind the knives, why you got into knife making. It's just a lot of fun. I really, really enjoy these episodes and I hope you do too. Now, this one's different than normal. I'm gonna try changing it up a little bit. Typically what I'll do is I'll kind of take your pictures that you email to me. I'll put them into my video editor and then do a voiceover afterwards. But it's a really slow, tedious process. So I'm hoping that maybe me just talking to the camera, reading from my computer and then meshing it all together in post-production is actually gonna speed it up a little bit and maybe even make it a slightly more dynamic episode. Either way, we're gonna give it a try. Let me know what you think in the comments, but let's get into this. So the first knife we're gonna look at today is sent to me from John. John is actually a dog trainer by trade, and he was working for an ABS, which is the American Bladesmith Society, Master Smith. He had actually done dog training lessons in exchange for knife making lessons, and that is really cool. So these knives are some of the first knives that John has made. These are all from 01 Tool Steel. Interesting steel selection. The first one here has canvas micarta scales with stainless pins. The second is a Skinner with desert ironwood scales and brass pins. And the third is a bushcraft that he did with a Scandi grind, walnut scales and brass pins. These are fantastic looking blades. I really like your design aesthetic. And it looks, I mean, for your first knives and for only have been making knives for about eight months, you're spending a lot of attention on the detail stuff. You're getting it right. And so this is absolutely fantastic. Very impressive, John. Thank you for sharing these with us. Now let's take a look at a knife from Thomas. Thomas is an engineering student and he's got a little 1x30 belt sander. He's working on making his own 2x72 grinder. Uh, but these are some of the knives that he's made. This very first one was out of a saw blade and the handle was part of his Christmas tree. Very cool way to reuse your uh, materials there. The second one he made for his friend's birthday. The blade is 1075 steel and the handle's oak and he darkened it with dust from the grinding process. So that is really cool. He literally took his metal grindies, his metal dusties and darkened darken the wood with that. How cool is that? That's, I've never heard of that idea, but I really, really like it. And this third knife is made from high chromium content steel. Not sure what kind of steel, but that's what Thomas is sharing with us here. And he tried to do an acid etch, but he wasn't happy with how it turned out. I think it looks really good. He said, you know what? There's always next time. Indeed, you're right, Thomas. Always next time. Try these things. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Just keep trying. It's so much fun. Excellent looking blades, and thank you for sharing these. All right, the third knife we're gonna look at is sent to me from Louie, and he's from the Bitter Blade Company on Instagram. Also, he has a YouTube. I'll leave that in the description below. Be sure to check both of those links out. And this is a Quaken style knife. He did this in AEBL and the, the micarta here, the, the burlap micarta is called Tequila Sunrise. I like that. That is a really great looking micarta. He's got some nice uh, micarta pins there and a nice micarta tube. Excellent looking blade here. Love the shape and the profile. Very clean, very nicely done. Also, Louis has been making knives since 2015 and that is really cool to see. Excellent work and work here and uh, thank you for sharing this. Okay, let's head to Plano, Texas and Jeff has just recently caught the knife making bug. He said thanks to channels like this, Alex Steel, Green Beetle, it's just been really inspirational. So thank you for your kind words, I appreciate that. And uh, he's making this knife here. This is the first knife he's made and he did it the old school way with the old file method. This turned out fantastic. You can see his little jig set up here. Uh, he's got his little stopper on the left there to keep the file from you know overshooting and keep his plunge line nice and consistent. And he's got to clamp down with a screw. That's a great way to go. I think this is a fantastic looking blade and uh, very nicely done. I like the, the scales that you put on here. Really nice laminate and plywood it looks like that, but just absolutely fantastic work. So Jeff, thank you so much for your wonderful email. Great looking knife. Now we're gonna head from Texas to Georgia. Jose is a 15 year old knife maker and he made these two Kiridashis out of a lawnmower blade with an angle grinder and files. You think about that for a moment, okay? He didn't say, oh, I don't have a grinder. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have steel. He said, hey, I've got a lawnmower blade. I've got an angle grinder and files. Those are easy to get, and he made these knives. Very, very inspirational. I like your approach, the way you just said, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Jose, 15 years old, doing this stuff, making things with your hands. Wonderful to see. These are great looking little Kiridashis here, and I hope this is the start of many more knives for you. Okay, we're going all the way to Australia. Ethan is a 16 year old knife maker and he made this knife for his cousin for her birthday. That is really, really cool to see. I'm sure she's just thrilled to get this. Uh, the steel he used was a recycled saw blade and he used the file jig method. You know, again, just kicking it old school, working, working away at the bevels there. The pins that he used were three millimeter brass rod and the scales were out of some timber and a couple of bits of plastic that he found in the garbage. The darker wood is Darta. I don't know what these 
words aren't typically, I just butcher the pronunciation of wood. I apologize. The lighter wood is called sweet mahogany, S-W-I-E-T, mahogany. Either way, this is great looking knife, great looking uh, handle on there. I like the texturing that you have on, on the bevels there. I'm sure that maybe was part of the heat treating process, but what a great looking knife. And I'm sure your cousin was absolutely thrilled when she received it for her birthday. So Ethan, keep up the great work. Chad is sending some pictures of knives that he's recently made. This first one here is from 1095 Steel, reclaimed copper from his old camper that he'd actually smelted down and recast to make the, the bolster there. He peened that over to add some decoration to it, and then he had some stabilized spalted maple that was from another local knife maker. Square pins in there, that's cool, I've never seen that. He said they didn't stay overly square when he peened them, but really, really, what a cool looking knife, the hidden tang in there. Very nice, very clean work you've done here. This next knife we'll look at is actually the third knife that he had ever made, and he did a, a semi-hidden tang knife. So you can kind of see the spine of the knife going into the, the handle there a little ways. That is a really, really cool way to do it. He's got brass pins in there again. Uh, Coco Bolo, mahogany, and homemade denim micarta at the back end of the handle there. Really, really cool. I like the way that you're trying out these new things, and you're not letting you know somewhat complicated, a complicated build like a semi-hidden tang knife hold you back. You're just going for it and doing it, and these are great looking knives, Chad. Thank you for sharing these with us. All right, the next knife is from Rick, and he's a 16-year-old knife maker. He's been making knives for about about a year now. This is about the 14th or 15th knife that he's made. He used 1095 steel. He did an acid wash on it, which looks really great. The handle is cherry with brass pins, and uh, this is just a really great looking blade. I love the profile of it. Really nice point on there. Looks like a very good usable blade. And thank you so much for the wonderful words. He said that this channel has been one of the big reasons he got into knife making, so I'm honored to hear that, and I'm glad that this has helped you out. Rick, keep up the great work. Thank you so much for sharing this. Okay, this next knife is sent to us from Josiah and he is from Benton, Kentucky. This knife, he used 01 tool steel, he put an acid etch on it, and he used Osaga orange handle. He also put in some black spacers and cloverleaf mosaic pins. Really cool blade there, I like those mosaic pins. Uh, then interesting profile, so, you know, the, the cool thing about these viewers knives is seeing how unique everyone makes their knives. And you know what? You know, it's like the old question, is there such thing as a perfect knife? Absolutely not. I mean, there's knives that are better to certain things than others, but there's no one knife that's just the greatest knife of them all. A lot of that too comes down to your personal style, and I love seeing the interesting stylings. You look at the, this knife compared to the other knives in these videos, you know what? You can't say one's better than the other, or one's wrong, one's right, because this is what he wanted to make. These are the, the styles and the portions and the lines that attracted him, and that's the great thing about making your own knife, is that you can do just that. You can say, you know what, I want this look to it. I want the handle to be like this. I want the blade like this. And you can come up with something, pulling inspirational elements from all over the place, and make a knife that is uniquely yours, and it just has your own flavor to it. So I see that when this knife, I think it's fantastic. Josiah, thank you for sending this in. And we're gonna wrap up this edition of Viewers Knives by taking a look at some knives from Mike. Now Mike is actually just down the road from me in Medicine Hat, Alberta. He is a heavy duty mechanic by trade, which is similar to what I am by trade, which is a millwright. Of course, millwright's just a little bit better than <laughs> heavy duty mechanic. I'm totally joking. Anyways, when he was 21 years old, he started his own business with his brother, Hydroco Industries, and about six months Months ago, he decided to give a try at knife making to see how that was, and he's absolutely enjoying it. He just wanted to share some of these knives here. He's starting to make kitchen knives even, uh, all kinds of different great looking blades. These look fantastic, Mike. It is really cool to see what you're making. Also, I've had some other email dialogues with Mike, and he's really getting into like with forges and stuff like that, and he's invited me to go to his shop, and we'll just start, so we, we gotta do that. We gotta get together and just start making some stuff. So, Mike, thank you so much for sending this in. Uh, I really look forward to, hopefully we can set this up and we can get together, hang out, make knives, and just have a blast. Well, that is gonna wrap up this edition of Viewers Knives. Thank you to everybody who sends your knives in to be featured. If you'd like to have your knife featured on this channel, just email me, jeremy at homesteadknives.com. I do have quite a wait. There's about three or 400 knives in the queue waiting to be featured, so have some patience. We will get to your knives, and I'm really excited to see what you guys are making. Go ahead and leave your comment. Show some support and encouragement in the description below. That's what this entire community is about, how we can support each other, help each other, encourage one another, and uh, yeah, just, just be good people in the comment section below, leave it down there, and wow, yeah. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Cheers. Oh man, that took a long time. Anyways, guys, that is gonna wrap this edition up. Of Anyways, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this edition of Viewers Knives. I wanna say a huge thank you to everybody who... <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's...
All right, guys. All right, guys. That. All right. Well, that's gonna wrap up this edition of Viewers Knives. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. All right. Well, that's gonna wrap up this edition. Pull. Share some positivity. Okay, thanks.